Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. Today we welcome newly elected member of Israeli parliament Ksenia Svetlova from the Zionist Union Party. Svetlova is also a veteran field dial reporter and our world analyst who in her career has interviewed Hamas's spiritual leader Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, Yasser Arafat and Mahmoud Abbas. Good evening. Thank you very much for Good coming. Good evening, Lucy. First of all, Mazal Tov. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, after you interviewed, uh, and I will take you to this uh, point, after you interviewed Mahmoud Abbas and Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, and you saw maybe the conflict uh, closer than anyone, and you spoke and you understood and you heard the music, do you think that still we can say that there is any chance for any understanding between the two sides? First of all, I, I believe that the two sides are not as uh, far away from each other at, uh, as we usually used to think. That's because, you know, I've been there and uh, I've been to the Palestinian villages when the prisoners were released during the last deals. I've been to Tahrir Square during the revolutions. So people are people everywhere. And uh, we have much in common, much more than, uh, you know, most of Israelis and most of Palestinians think. And I believe that even if we have slightest of chances to reach some kind of agreement here, then we have to really put all our strength, all our energy into this to reach it. Uh, I have two small kids and I'm terrified with the idea that they will live through the same or even worse conflict that we experience in our lifetime. So uh, what do you think that the two sides don't understand about each other? What do you think that the Israeli side is um, maybe failed to understand and on the contrary, the Palestinian side failed to understand? You know, I'm looking usually at the um, statistic uh, researches uh, about you know, the conceptions of two sides of each other. And usually what I see is it's throughout the years, throughout the last 20 years of the peace process, it's been too long a process, uh, uh, that uh, most, uh, you know, most people, uh, the majority, about 60% on the Palestinian side, about 70% on the Israeli side, support the two-state solution. However, only the slightest minority believe in goodwill of each other. You know, so we would like to be there at this place, but we do not really trust each other uh, because you know there is too much, too much demonization. Uh, all the time that I was going back from Kalandia checkpoint with some bags of full of shopping, uh, the soldiers would ask me, uh, so uh, where did you get these things? I would say, in Ramallah. Do you shop in Ramallah? And that's, you know, expression, facial expression said it all. You don't believe that you can do shopping in Ramallah. You don't believe that you can go for a vacation to, let's say, I don't know, Cairo, just for fun. You know, and that, that's about that, really. You know, that's, we don't, uh, through these lenses of so much, you know, layers of, of fear, uh, of demonization of each other, we don't see each other really anymore. You, you just know, see uh, images. Exactly, because you're talking about images and stereotypes and, and maybe education. Can, can you change this in both? sides? Well, education is very important, uh, but uh, I believe that even if things were different starting from yesterday, you know, from today, whatever, uh, it would take us a few generations to, you know, work on misconceptions of and, uh, and each other. Uh, but I believe that if we would reach some kind of agreement, just as we reached with Egypt, I think it's a perfect example. Because uh, Egyptians, about 99% of them, at the time of 79, 70, 80s, uh, they were against such an agreement. Uh, right now, we are in much better situation with the Palestinians, because the majority of Palestinians still do believe that we need an agreement, and they st still believe in two-state solution. Uh, although it's tough, you know, we have a lot of uh, obstacles, but still, they believe in it. Uh, so I believe that if we were already to bring this kind of, uh, of permanent agreement between the sides, then we will just grow into it. And then, of course, we will have each, each one to work on the patterns of, of behavior, of thinking, uh, but yet it's something that it will take generations to change, unfortunately. Gener you're talking about generations to change, and, and if the Palestinians do think about this a solution, do you think that the Israelis believe in it? Because it seems that the Israelis lost hope. I believe that uh, during the last uh, two sets of elections, uh, so many Israelis voted for, let's say, neutral parties, you know, like uh, Yesh Atid, like Kahlon's party, uh, because they didn't want to make, it, to make a choice uh, between the right that offers no solutions whatsoever and between the left that offers it's very difficult solutions, but yet they do still exist. Uh, so the majority just doesn't want to make this very difficult choice. It's a personal choice. It's an in inner choice. Uh, so I think this is one of the failures uh, of these uh, elections uh, of 2015. Uh, too, many, too, much, too many Israelis uh, were in some kind of fantasy that they can be left alone to their, you know, economical struggle and to, you know, very important issues, but still not to think about the political uh, situation here. 
Just y it's a luxury not to afford to not to talk about it, not to think about it. Y you know, it's it's. A, I'm I'm trying to think about uh, like a, a piece that I saw on Channel Two uh, on Friday, asking children what they think about uh, leftists, what they think about Mizrahi Jews, what they think about Arabs, what they think about, and the answers that I I heard there. It it seems that um, you cannot not think that it got to do that the hope was lost just two generations before. It's not something new. And maybe this is the failure, I'm, I'm trying to think with you. Maybe this is the failure of the left to think that if you call for peace, it will happen eventually. But at the end of the day, it's not like that. You know, uh, all of us, I think, um, the majority at least uh, in the left, uh, we are not naive people. We are people with, ex with experience. Uh, there, were, there are a lot of army people, for example. Yes, they're generals. Uh, there are reporters like me that have seen, you know, the terror in their own eyes. I've seen people who were sending, you know, other suicide bombers to do the, 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 the deed for them, you know. So, so I've been there and I know that. I don't have any rosy glasses. But the people I do Israel, not. I do not. I do not believe that we can bring upon... Peace. But I believe the people in, you know, don't the, believe yes. the people in Israel don't believe the left anymore that he knows that the, the left knows what he's talking about that the left is actually uh, more experienced uh, even if the, we're talking about people who were in the army and saw terror like you're saying the people in Israel don't believe the left anymore. I don't uh, think that this is the you know. Uh, it's kind of a truism, you know, that people do not believe the left anymore. Look what happened in these elections. Uh, we've got 24 seats, uh, p p p parties that are still affiliated more with the left than with the right, even though they not prefer not to talk uh, in depth about the political situation, got 11 seats, uh, merits five seats. So our block is very stable and it's uh, growing, actually. It's not uh, becoming smaller. Let's see what, what is happening here. Uh, and if we will check, uh, check the core uh, beliefs of people who vote to the right, then we will also find very surprising things. We will, if they will just uh, ask them, do you believe uh, one state solution for two people or two states for two people? Then the majority, I think 95%, would say that, of course, you know, because we do believe in the Jewish state of Israel because we want it to continue. So then uh, the only other solution is uh, the two state solution. Okay. You know, if we will put it just bluntly like this, you know, without going like, okay, we want peace, we want the eternal, uh, you know, happiness for, for everybody. Yes, of course, we do, we do want this. But yeah. I don't think it will come, even if we'll have the settlement. What we will have uh, much more, we will have more possibilities of defending ourselves. We will have less pressure from the outer world. Uh, and yes, of course, uh, we will do the right thing for the people who uh, need that. We will make the right thing for them, the Palestinians, of course. You know, I, I sat down with a newly elected member from the Kulanu party, and uh, she's coming also from the Russian-speaking uh, society uh, in uh, Israel. And when I asked her why they are uh, voting only for the right, the most, the majority is voting for the right, she gave me a reason of because she saw that our, one Arab was killing a Jew and she, and it, it, the subtext was that reason. Do you think that this is the reason that the Russian minority is voting only to the right? I think there are many reasons. It's a very complicated issue. We cannot just, you know, put it on, you know, one single incident, important as it might be. Uh, first of all, the Russians did not always vote for the right. It's important to remember that they brought about Rabin in 92, and then, uh, then again Ehud Barak in 99. So then there is can be can be a, you know set of uh, uh, events that can bring upon uh, for you know the Russian uh, sp speaking people, Israelis uh, vote, voting for for the left as well. And I know that for. For us, we brought two and a half seats, two and a half mandates this time uh, from the Russian community, uh, which people said to us it cannot be because we stood on zero to half a seat uh, before the elections. During the campaign, we, you know, brought it to two and a half. I think it's an achievement, and I think it's we are on the right path. But perhaps during the next next campaign, I think uh, I'm a you know newborn politician, but I think already it's smart to think about the next elections today. Uh, then we will have we have to be much more blunt than we were this time. We have to put things on the table, guys. We do not have much time here. The two-state solution is slipping through our fingers. We either have that or we will live happily or not happily ever, ever after together here. Mm. Uh, Xania, um, amazing conversation. Thank you uh, very much. And um, you sound more realistic than uh, what people think that the left is in Israel. Thank you uh, very much thank for you. Uh, coming to our thank studio. You so much. And thank you all of yours for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we'll be here at the same time, same place from the Jeff Port Israel. Have a great night.